Okay. We will be live in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Oh, I messed that up. <laughs> Let me try again. Welcome to New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe Normal Any Percent. It's a fun old category, and I'm. Boy, am I going to run it. You just. You, you watch me go. Alright. Uh, I'm just gonna hop right in. Uh, and I. And we're just gonna see what happens. Uh, time starts on the first input on the world map when I turn right, so I'm gonna give a countdown. Uh, start the timer on three. One, two, three. And there we go. Also, once again, I would like everyone to congrats uh, I am Uncle Slam for his Mario Maker 2 run. That was just, that was exquisite. And he just deserves a thumbs up. Alright, now just to explain this run, I'm going to be shifting what character I use throughout the run uh, multiple times. Uh, for example, for the first few levels, I'm going to be playing as Nabbit, who is just a special little bean because he can just run through everything. Uh, he's immune to enemy damage, and so on. Uh, first off, uh, you might be wondering why not just use Nabbit the entire run if he's invincible. That's because I'm going to be utilizing the acorn suit that allows me to do a lot of skips. Specifically, I skip a lot of auto scrollers that make me feel good about myself. So, I'm only really going to use Nabbit for the first five levels of the run. Like, after the roughly eight minute mark, I'm not touching Nabbit again. But yeah, I didn't really explain 1 1 that much because it was literally just a hold right level. This level is also pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to be brutally honest, the run definitely gets a lot more complicated and complex with its tricks uh, after uh, World 7 and on, so about 15 minutes into the run. Not to say that the rest of the earlier run is completely boring, it's just, oh my god, it's so cool. You, you guys don't understand. I'm going to look so cool failing every single trick, and you guys are going to laugh, and we're just, I don't know anymore. But yeah, I'm just holding right, trying to slide on the ground to keep speed. Here's the hardest part of the level for me. Timing this jump so that I get up there to the secret exit. Uh, taking this secret exit, I'm gonna go to 1S, or 1 secret, and we're gonna play a fun water level, which... I know it sounds bad, trust me, it's, it's not too bad if not, it, you'll see why. Now let's see if I can get up the stairs, which is... Actually, I take that back. This is the hardest part of the level. Yeah, I, I boofed it, but it, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just that good. Secret tunnel. Oh, I, is that an avatar reference? I, I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Slam. Alright, uh, a cutscene's just gonna start here. If we have any donations, yeah, you could just read them now. It's like a minute long cutscene. I don't know, I suck at timing. <laughs> it's all good. I am happy to talk about what you can donate towards because we have several bid wars and also one incentive currently going. Uh, for Titanfall 2, which is coming up later in the marathon, you can donate towards killing or sparing the Marvin. And right now, killing is ahead, but only by $10. So if you want to see the Marvin spared instead, you can donate towards that. Or then we also have a metal slug coming up where you can donate towards a character choice and right now there's no money towards any of the characters there's an easy snipe for your favorite there or which uh, metal slug is a race so you can donate towards the loser of said race doing squats there's five dollars per squats and right now we're at sixty dollars so if you want to see the loser of this race do more than 12 squats you can donate towards that yeah what she said but uh yeah, please give a, please give money. Uh, it helps a cause. Anyways, as you probably noticed with my Nabbit gameplays, Nabbit basically has frog slash penguin suit physics. As in, the man just goes really fast in water. I just mash the A button and I just simply win the game. This level is honestly quite brutal to do with anyone else other than Nabbit. I, it worries me. Mario movement in this level worries me. But yeah, that, that was a beautiful water swimming animation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, now here comes the longest cutscene in the game. 
yeah, the early game of this is really filled with cutscenes, as you're probably catching on. But yeah, I'm not joking, this is actually the longest cutscene in this run. So, just enjoy the visuals. Also, speaking of incentives, I honestly contemplated for this run deciding if like picking a character would be an incentive, but overall I realized I'm a coward and that I don't want to do that, and I just want to save as much like safety acorns as I can with the other characters. I'll explain what I mean when I get later in the run. But yeah, uh, taking this level, we're going to go skip all the way to World 5. And my god, that's just almost all the game over. Like, for all castles, this is usually like an hour in the run, where I play World 1, 2, 3, and 4. But now, it's simply just 5 minutes into the run. And that's just simply cool. Also, luckily, that was the only water level in this level, in this game, or slash run. So, fear not. Okay, this is 5-1. Everything is big, and it's a reference to Super Mario Bros. 3, which I love. Also, it's a fairly simple level, even without Mavid. Uh, while I'm running this level, I should mention, uh, all my extended family just came into my house, so there's a chance I'm just gonna go AFK for like 5 minutes or something. So we're gonna just hope that doesn't happen, and I can finish this honestly 40-ish run a 40-ish minute run in peace. I have small goals in life, you can tell. Dear God, what am I doing? But yeah, that was 5 1, where Michael's like right there. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, to save a few frames on every level, I hit the flagpole backwards, which saves about 0.2 seconds every level, which adds up quite a bit for this category. Especially the longer categories. Uh, also, there's usually a cutscene here where, like in the original Wii U, it just it's a cutscene about Toad saying, Nabbit stole my stuff, but because I am Nabbit, uh, the cutscene just doesn't appear, which saves 50 seconds over the original version of this game. Next, uh, this level is actually very brutal with Mario, but with Nabbit, it's pretty average. Mainly because the Brambles have one of the worst hitboxes I've ever seen in a video game. It's, like, oddly small. And just inconsistent. Like, when you think you're heading in the top of them, you'll hit the line and then lose Acorn. And killing your run. But simply, that just does not happen with Nabbit. He's a good boy. Oh, another thing I should mention is, uh... Navid also hits the flagpole faster than all the other characters, so that saves an additional 0.2 seconds. I have no idea why his animation is slightly faster, but boy oh boy, it makes me feel cool. Alright, um, here comes 5T, and from here I'm going to be switching to Blue Toad. Let it be known that it would actually be faster to play Mario, just because of how the cycles work through the characters. However, Blue Toad is simply better. Not because of any stats, they play identical, but he makes me feel strong and gives me compassion. So, thus, Blue Toad. Don't worry though, I'm gonna try and cycle through the rest of the characters throughout the run. I'm gonna see if I can whip out Luigi and Mario instead. But yeah, this is a mini auto scroller level, and this is where I'm going to grab Acorn, which I ideally keep for the rest of the run. Keyword ideally. Ooh, I almost hit how? How did I almost hit that? Okay. Anyways, um, the thing with I should explain acorn real quick. How do I explain this? Oh, oh yeah, another auto scroller skip. <laughs> I forgot to explain. That saves about twenty seconds over just waiting out the snake blocks. But yeah, the way acorn works is you could glide in. And air and glide speed is just as fast as run speed, so that's very cool. I know this sounds like a small thing, but trust me, it's very big. You also get a mid-air jump that you can do with it, which allows you to reach like very high platforms and really helps with vertical levels. 
Oh! That was such a weird hit for Boom Boom. I, I don't understand what went wrong there. But I'll take it. Oh, I should also mention just... Because we just got off a of Mario Maker 2 run, but... Acorn was nerfed incredibly hard for Mario Maker 2. Like, uh, you can't, like, midair jump out of a spin jump. Uh, wall jumping is just weird, I forget why. It's been a while since I played Mario Maker 2. So on. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, a spin jump is just, it, it's the equivalent to the height of a triple jump. And I can just glide out of that, so it's a really neat way just to gain height. Yes, that's a sentence. Please, please don't question it. Alright, here's a ghost level. Uh, we're gonna try and take a secret exit here. Uh, this level uh, is, has a bit of a mini elevator skip, as you're about to see. Now, please let me get this. I did not get it. Please go away. Oh no! I boofed it. That's okay, I could grab an acorn in the next level, but this just makes me feel bad about myself. You feel me? But ideally the way it works is I climb a left wall, and I just skip this entire dumb stupid elevator. Please go away. Please go away. The acorn is OP as long as you manage to keep it. Ooh, I lost 20 seconds there. That, that hurts. Now here's a fun part of the level. Observe. Intuitive gameplay. I truly am peeking. Whatever. I'm just glad the level's over. Just put me on my sweet Missouri. Alright, uh, this next level is just kind of an auto-scroller. If there's any more donations or anything the host wants to say, this would be the good chance. All right, perfect, because uh, I guess someone wants to see some suffering because we got $40 from an anonymous donor saying, make them feel the burn. Make them feel the matted burn. My God, I will. For you. But yeah, thank you for the $40. Uh, originally, what I wanted to do here is keep the acorn toad and then switch to Luigi so that I have a second acorn in the backup. However, because I'm a dumb, stupid idiot, I just have to grab Acorn back right now. It ate my spin jump, so I almost died. Let it be known I am good at video games. I also see, like, randomly in, like, the comment section of any, like, Let's Play for this game. Uh, for some reason, everyone is terrified of this level. Uh, they, they always find this a really hard level. It's not, like, in terms of speedrunning, but, but, dear god, I wish it, I could skip this auto-scroller. That is all. There's also, there are a lot of auto-scrollers in this run, but most of them I skip, except for one, as you're going to see later. I'll, I'll explain it when I get to get there. Don't let those seconds get you down. I'll, I'll do it for you, Slam. Ooh. Wait. Also, just something sad. For a lot of other new Super Bros games and like Super Mario World and 3D. Okay, you get the point, but you get to keep a backup item like in your inventory where you just hit a button, it comes out. I so wish this game had that. That would make me feel a lot le less bad about myself when I lose Acorn. Especially because you could grab so many of the other colors. Just, it's free real estate and it makes the game really beginner friendly. Without compromising like the hard world records, it's just neat. It, it's really not that big of a deal. My equivalent thing to that is just using alternate characters. But yeah. All right, Odd Scroller's almost over. Also, King Bill makes the appearance, makes the big boy appearance. My God, we are all just proud of him. Okay, that was that was a level.
All right, I'm 28 seconds behind my PB, but I don't care. I'm I will prove myself. But that being said, here's this is also an auto spoiler. However, I get to skip it because I'm cool at the game. This level, okay, admittedly from here on out, the run definitely ramps up in difficulty. And, uh, sky oil points. This level being one of them. I'm gonna attempt to do something here called cloud skip, where I just, usually I just sit on the platform and let it scroll from left to right. I'm not going to do that, I'm just gonna fly over the clouds. God, that is just, that is poetic. Alright. I can still get part of the skip, though. Please, two, three. Today is not my day. Uh, how do I do- <gasps> I forgot those blocks disappear. I am so ashamed. I should have just, like, YOLO'd it and jumped on the water wing. And pray. Pray to the Miyamoto himself. That is okay though. I will still clutch this. Luckily I can grab Acorn on this level, so... This isn't the worst level to get beat on. However, Auto Scroller's a uh, bad girl. So, it is slightly unfortunate. Ooh, are you an Acorn? No, you're not. There's no acorn, only violence. Oh yeah, but this isn't me sucking at the game, this is just improv. Guys, please listen to Slam, I'm good at this game. Simply because he said so. I'm starting to think I might get this run over 45 minutes. Okay. I'm just gonna speed through the rest of this and get... Uh, the second and third part of the skip. The first part is the hardest. I'm just, I'm going to say that just to improve my self-esteem. But regardless, isn't this neat? I swear to God, if I die there. Oh yeah. Side note. Uh, if I hit double dig, if I hit a flag with double digits on the clock, I'm going to get fireworks appear, which loses 15 seconds every sing on the first time and. 12 on the other, and the rest. And losing time is a big no-no in speedruns. That's why I haven't lost time in this run yet. Okay, here's a level I... I don't know what I'm doing. That is okay. I saw something bad about to happen, and I just said no, so I played a safe strat. I hope if, if this run's quality is horrible, at least you guys can maybe enjoy my commentary somehow. That's gonna be my saving grace. That and I'm helping charity or something like that. Whatever comes first. Okay, that was a weird level. Ooh, here comes my least favorite level in the run. 7T. Uh, something you know about this level is this definitely is hurt, depends quite a bit on RNG, with the Fire Bros and the boss on top of the tower, which is canon because you probably probably guess. But yeah, like when the Fire Bros shoot their fireballs or where they jump back, that is completely RNG after they shoot the first fireball. So I just, I have to hope. Also, on top of the Fire Bros, there's quite precise uh, movement up of this vertical level. Oh. This was quite scuffed, but... Oh. Oh. Pipe entries are hard for me, and I don't know why. Okay, luckily... Oh yeah, this, that's another thing. This level is cycle-based. 
which is quite scary. Luckily, uh, the first and second part, part of the level, specifically that pipe I was growing to enter, they have different global cycles. 40 door. Eh, that's... sure. Uh, I suppose. Alright. Kamek, this boss is RNG where a block pattern he's about to spawn, and where Kamek spawns himself. Ideally, he spawns close to me, because running is hard. I boost that. I don't think I was gonna get that anyways, but... That spawn is also RNG. It happens to the best of us. <gasps> no, he intercepted me, you goon! Although the third spot is RNG. But yeah, Kamek is very scary because I'll have a run that's on PV pace, and then Kamek just says no, and then the run dies. It's a common thing to happen with this game. But regardless, I still think the game, the running the game is worth it because the, bad, the good outweighs the bad. Okay. Uh. This, I'm already two minutes behind PV, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clutch up roll, the rest of World 7 and 8. And you people are going to be in awe. The one thing I will say though is the reason this is the longest any percent New Street Harbors game is definitely correlated with the cutscenes. Like, I think if you took the cutscenes out, it'd be relatively short. So then again, Luigi U, which has the same exact cutscenes, is 26 minutes. So, I, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Yeah, I'm just... I'm gonna jump all over the big scary boos. Uh, something you should know about this level. Uh, platforming is strange. I have no really sufficient way to explain this level. But, but, I just want to let you know, I'm proud of myself. This involves over just like, in, uh, tight platforming in closed off rooms, rather than the big open rooms that I'm used to. So that's where this level just is odd. Okay, so far this level's actually going pretty good. Oh yeah, it's just another thing. If you guys hear that in the background, that is my CPU fan. My CPU simply disagrees with OBS, so it just makes that noise. Also, it gets very, very warm, so... This is where we start just praying to Miyamoto himself, and hope that my CPU doesn't implode. Okay, uh, this next level, Seven Castle, there's a fast cycle and a slow cycle. I'm going to attempt fast cycle and try and live cool. Fast cycle saves about roughly four seconds over slow cycle, so it's not going to be the worst thing I do today if I get boofed. Chugs, ranch, dress. Chad is being weird right now. You guys worry me. I respect you guys, but you worry me. Okay, a uh, setup I do is I just walk normally until I get to the sign, and then I full jump and start running. Oh, I, I forgot to mention. Uh, you might notice at the start of every level, or most of them anyways. Oh, I think I got it. Yes! Fast cycle. But you might notice that I do a short, a short, like, short hop glide. Uh, I do that because you, you accelerate faster in the air than you do on the ground. So it just it saves a bit of time. You're gonna see I do that when I get back in the door. <clears throat> we got it. We in it like it's in it. Yeah, yeah look, here. Here's the short off line. Watch this epic attack. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Intuitive gameplay. I'll explain more stuff later, but let's just explain this mini boss fight. Usually, this boss fight depends on RNG, but with the mid her glide, I could just skip the RNG section and just get an early hit on this. 
Very cool. Alright, also, I know he's going to spawn on this side of... Pop out of his shell right here. Because he just pops on whatever... Like... Whatever side that he's approaching first, that's where he's going to pop out. Spike spinning around multiple times. But yeah, that's Ludwig. Big Ludwig. Also, uh, chat, just curious question. What is your favorite Koopling? Mine is Ludwig. Liquid space on the ship head is far more terrifying. Oh, very. In fact, every single ship in this game has a Koopaling face on it. I personally think Wendy's is the most terrifying, but I respect your opinion. Okay, here's... Here's a level. I love and hate this level. This level's an auto like a literal three-minute auto-scroller. But the, the boss of this level is weird. You'll see what I mean later. Uh, speaking of faces on ships. Big boy. Look at big boy. Oh. Oh, baby. I forgot to grab the back of Acorn. No. I can't even grab any more back of Acorns for the rest of the run. I'm a pleb. That's okay. I won't even need it because I'll just clutch up the run. Also, uh, if you have like any donations or anything you the host would like to read, this would be a good chance. This is again I'd like a two minute hour for it. Always happy to plug more about our incentives because we do have a bonus run potentially coming up later in the marathon. Uh, I believe it's tomorrow uh, for Celeste Classic 2, 100% by Sex Rex. If that's something you do want to see, we do need to raise a total of $1,200 and we're only $10 in because this was recently added. So uh, we have quite a bit of ways to go for there. And in case you're wondering, but hey, what else good can my money do? Uh, we are raising money for Sweet Relief, specifically the Sweet Relief Musicians Fund. And they provide financial assistance to all types of career musicians who are struggling to make ends meet while facing illness, disability, or age-related problems. In other words, healing musicians in need. So really, it's a great cost that you're donating towards, as well as you get more speed on content. Exactly. We also, Celeste is a neat game. Please go support it. Uh, anyways, uh, as we admire Bowser's hand, I guess, I suppose, let's just take a moment to grab all the Star Coins. Uh, now the thing is, grabbing the Star Coins, it doesn't, it's not any faster or slower, but it does make me feel cool and good at the game, which, after how the early game went, I really, really need the Ego Boost. So, please, please, chat, just give me this. This is all I have in this godforsaken world. Also, hey, we only have like 10 minutes left of the run. This run's going by a lot quicker than I thought. Uh, honestly, God, I was terrified of commentating for, for just doing anything for a marathon, because it's my first time, but... Even though the run is quite a board, quite awful, this is pretty fun and pretty neat and reminded me why I like screaming. Because I have not screamed in like a month. So, thank you, everyone. Oh, I didn't know the little platform stops. Oh, side note, I forgot to mention, this is the only place where motion controls are needed for the game. I'm controlling the mini platform I'm standing on right now by tilting my Pro Controller. And yes, I play with Pro Controller because anyone that plays with Joy-Con is a peasant. Sorry, Uncle Slam, you're doing it wrong. Like, I know it's the same speed, but... You're God. Although I will say a lot of top runners for this game actually do play with Joy-Con. So do what you like. I am not a Joy-Con enthusiast. I have broken like four pro Joy-Cons in the span of a month. I'm honestly impressed how I managed to do it. I'm just a creature, just an utter creature when it comes to the Nintendo Switch accessories. Okay. Uh, Joy-Con rant over. Here comes the mini boss. Uh, to explain what you're about to see, I'm going to be fighting Bowser Jr. while he's in the clown car. And I really hate this boss fight because his hitbox is so whack. Actually, I'm grabbing the checkpoint. I don't trust myself anymore. But yeah, 
This hitbox is very, very tiny, very specific. So, bear with me. Okay, there's hit number one. No, it ate my input. Okay, we're good, we're good. <gasps> you saw that, I went through him. You're a goon. I hate you so much. But yeah, that's Bowser Jr. A really scuffed Bowser Jr. <laughs> like, come on. I'm not the only one that saw that. I literally went straight through the middle. I was... I hate this man. I try to use a visual cue, like, when he sticks out his arms. That's when I spin jump, and then I made her jump at my apex. But, because his hitbox does not exist until then. I have no idea why. I take back what I said about the Brambles. They are only the second worst run. Oh, I mean, sorry, second worst hitbox. My brain is dying. Alright, we have five levels left of the run. And a dream. And I'm gonna be honest. Uh, World 8 has the hardest level of the run. And my worst personal level of the run. So I'm quite scared. But yeah, uh, this is gonna be a fun level, or world. Uh, just also, just as a little tiny bit of trivia, um, you're gonna hear the overall theme for World Eight. It's actually a really dramatic remix of the Peach's Castle's theme for Mario 64. I just think that's really a really really neat attention to detail. I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Which is unfortunately not much, because we don't get to listen to the music that much, because I'm not allowed to stay in the overworld, I must play level. Alright, uh, here's- this level seems- this level is on a global cycle and seems really hard, but it's actually not that bad. Overall, I- yeah, also another thing, speaking of hitboxes, watch this. Like, I, I went in the lava, but the game just... It felt bad for me, because... 17. Alright, but yeah, that was basically this level. That was the easiest level of this world. And it, it just gets harder from here. Fun fact, my split for this section of levels is called Run Killer. That, that's a good sign. That's a really good sign. Alright, also I should mention, there is a secret exit on 8-1 that I opted not to take, because it takes me to an auto-scroller, and if I do an auto-scroller skip here, uh, this is slightly faster. Uh, I'm just gonna stop talking and pray. Yeah, about praying. Dear god, I don't have an A from for the rest of the run. I'm actually going to go grab a backup just so I can show you guys tricks, but let's just contemplate life and her place in the universe while I regret all my decisions, like every single one of them. Oh, here's the improv. Oh, I, I was hoping one of those blocks would have an uh, ice flower. So I can make the joke that you never use an ice flower in a Mario U run. But the game doesn't even give me that satisfaction, which is... Quite sad if you really break it down. Oh yeah, fun fact, if I spin jump, jump and then throw the shell, it goes faster. I just think that's, that's very neat. Oh my god, you guys are so slow. But yeah, the way this skip was supposed to work... Uh, I was supposed to be able just to skip the entire thing, glide over this entire raft. But yeah, that's not happening today. I don't care. It's okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, but for showcase purposes, normally what I do here is just switch to Nabbit and finish off the run. But I, for the sake of showcasing the run for the marathon, I'm gonna just go grab an Acorn 1-1. And that's the cool way of saying I want to bully Nabbit very hard right now. So we're gonna go back and play 1-1 again, which is... I'm not playing it because I'm bad. I'm playing it because I simply enjoy the level. I'm a 1-1 enthusiast. Oh, look. Look at that. The author's levels. Wouldn't it be cool if we played them? Yeah, I don't think so. Jokes aside, I think All Castle is my favorite category for this entire game. Just to showcase just so much of the game is neat. I like all the categories of the game, to be honest. Oh! Whoa! Snipe? Snipe? Very cool. I will say though, uh, speaking of the lava bean orange soda, if you look closely, every world in this game is themed after some sort of dessert, like soda jungle, desert, dessert, desert, uh, sparkling water, waters, I think. That's technically not a dessert, but just go with it. But yeah, everything is themed after a food, like rock candy mines, I don't know how to pronounce marine, or whatever it is. But yeah, if you look closely, the entire world is something resembling a cake. Which is pretty cool if you think about it. What's the pea acorn? Oh, the pea acorn is some. Oh, uh, you might have heard of the pea leaf. I from. I don't know if that was in Mario Three, but I noticed it. It was in NSP Two. And Virgin Land. Well, well, you get the point. Uh, basically, what it does, I can do an infinite amount of manner of jumps, which kind of puts the game in uh Goo Goo Gaga baby mode. Which is pretty neat. I might use it later, if next three levels go horribly. Oh, it was an SMB3. Sorry, I, I don't run much NES games, despite an NES being literal two feet away from me as we speak. I gotta run a game on there somehow. I looked away from the screen, and I feel like a dingus. Okay. 39. Sure. Okay. Here comes the hardest run of the category. Or, no, just of the game. I don't have to... I don't have to subjugate it just to any percent. This level is brutal, and you're going to see why. It involves a lot of precise movement with the acorn suit. However, I, I think it's just cool. Please don't let me lose acorn in this one. Thank you. Alright, this level is going to be my saving grace, and it's going to redeem me. Now, let's get this fat dub. Oh no, that is not dub. That is not dub. Okay, I goofed it. But I can still make it work. Okay, here comes the hardest part of this level. Sorry I'm not explaining much, just I'm really trying to concentrate and it's just not working. Oh hey, I got it! Did I redeem myself, chat? Did I do it? But yeah, that's a really that's honestly one of the coolest levels to watch. When done very well. Oh, that was rough. Alright, one more level and dream. This is probably like a 41 minute pace run. 42, who am I kidding? Redeem! Yeah, this level I have been grinding non-stop during school for the past week, instead of studying for my AP statistics tests and quizzes. I may have a C- in statistics right now, but I have a harder goal than that heart is filled with Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. Now watch me fail it. I only get like a fourth of the time of scrap going for right now. 
basically the whole gist of this level is getting Bowser Jr. to push me as much as I can. <gasps> I got it! I got it! It's been so long since I got that in a run. Dear God, why did I have to be in a run when I'm plus four minutes? <laughs> Whatever. Alright, uh, now on to the final boss. Ooh! You won't be able to guess who it is. Never. Don't look in the background. You won't guess. Also, side note, I think the PNGs in the background are very pretty. It's a very minor detail, but cool. Okay, well, you see, this is actually the hardest boss in the fight, because of finic finicky RNG patterns, hitbox, and yeah, he's dead. Yeah, you can just jump over him with the acorn, and it's just... He's just there. The final ba boss is actually Ganondorf, but not the good one, the one from like the Zelda CDI games. Oh, side note, fun fact. You could always jump over Bowser in Luigi U just because of the increased jump height. So you don't even need the eight points, you can jump over him. John Madden as the final boss. That man has me sweating. But yeah, Bowser's dead, and now we just run to the finish line. Look! Peach in a tower, all alone. Dear God, this is what the economic crisis has done to us since 1928. Quite brutal. Okay, uh, jokes aside, this final boss actually is hard when, when you don't know what you're doing, but pretty easy when you do. However, if I mess this up, I lose 40 seconds every time I mess up. Like, 40 seconds every single time. It's brutal. First of all, I do a minute jump there just to trigger Bowser Jr. early. Then from here, I'm just. I'm gonna bop him with the clown card. Also, fun fact you actually can kill a big Bowser with fireballs, but it takes 88 fireballs to get him in the shell once, which. Dear God, I don't want to do the math right now. But yeah, that's at least. That's at least 180 fireballs you have to do to kill Bowser if you want to take the scenic route. Oh my god, he's gonna hit me. Oh! Oh, side note, I think time is on this bit. Wait, is it? Yes it is, yes it is, time, time, time. Okay, 42 minute run. Hmm. Sorry, I, I wasn't paying attention to how many times I hit him. So I didn't know where I was. But yeah, I got 42 minutes flat. No, actually my timer is off, so... It's more like 42 minutes and 3 seconds. Overall, very scuffed run. I I have no comment. I'm impressed at some parts, and just quite depressed at others, but it just simply worked out. That's all I'll say. It just... I have the power. But yeah, you... Hey, at least you got below estimate. Hey! Yeah, I, I did a... St I remember saying... Oh, this estimate's stupidly high. It's gonna be under 40 minutes, and then... No. But yeah, we, we, we take these dubs. Uh, with that being said, I do not know what else to add on. Thank you everyone for coming. Sorry the run wasn't good, but I hope you got something out of this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have any shoutouts or any other plugs that you would like to make? Uh, shout out to my cat. Uh, her name is Flat, and she is seven weeks old, and she's very soft. Th that is all. It's valid. Thank you so much. Oh wait, also thank you Midwest Beef Special for that experience. That was pretty cool.